What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Brutally Speaking Podcast. I am one of your hosts, John, and with me, as always, is Daniel Terry. How are you doing? Hey, hey, I'm doing good. Uh, we'll get to the episode's guest, because the last couple episodes we've done, we uh, talk for like 20 minutes and then be like, hey, by the way, we, we had so-and-so on. Uh, this episode's guest is Corey from Trivium, whose latest album, What the Dead Men Say, is out now via Roadrunner Records. Um, this is actually a really good record. Um, I was kind of a little bummed. Uh, we had a headline, I guess, in the making, uh, stating, you know, that uh, the band was already writing new material, but... Uh, you know, Corey talked to someone else and said the same thing, and I saw that today or yesterday as one we're recording. Yeah, I saw that too. I thought that was kind of, uh, I mean, it's not really anybody's fault. It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just where it is. But uh, I, I have, I had a very similar experience. Yes, uh, yes you did <laughs> recently, uh, as I did a uh, interview with Brock Lindau from uh, Thirty Six Crazy Fists for uh, discography. I'm sorry uh, for Discuss Metal. Can't even get my own podcasts right, and uh, Doc Hoyle puts out a, a a new a new podcast with an interview with Brock, and um, I mean I got to give Brock credit; he's consistent. Uh, <laughs> he said a lot of the same stuff, and so uh, and again, that's nobody's fault. It's just uh, great minds think alike is, is what I'm going to chalk that up to. Yeah, now the hashtag foiled by Coyle can uh, be used by discography discussion. Definitely. Yeah, no, uh, th- it was kind of interesting. You know, when we did this chat, Trivium was just constantly in the news uh, with all the interviews they were doing between, you know, Matt saying that they were going to not put out the record and just a lot of other things kind of that have been said in a lot of their press junkets uh, that they've been doing. So I actually kind of was like, oh, let's let's wait a little bit um, to release our episode so maybe people won't be fatigued uh, from hearing about the new Trivium record and so forth. Uh, and I on top of that, I thought we had something a little bit more special with the fact that Corey seemingly hasn't been doing a ton of press. Um, so it was one of those where I was kind of, you know, trying to space it out a little bit and give people like, you know, all right, okay, we got over that first week or so of a lot of Trivium stuff. And then, oh, cool. Now I'm looking forward to hearing something new from somebody else in the band. And uh, right then uh, I don't remember who it was, but uh, the, the news was already made. So. Um, but there's still a lot of cool shit in this interview. Uh, you know, we talk a lot uh, about, you know, the record, the fact that the band doesn't sacrifice uh, the integrity of anything they do. They're so hands on and everything has to be at a certain level. And it's really interesting to see a band uh take such ownership of their career when a lot of bands are just kind of... I mean, how many times have you heard the story, well, I I didn't know the accountant was fucking us that bad until, you know, we (laughs) we didn't have any money or, you know, X, Y, or Z. So... Yep. Jared Montague wrote a whole book about it. Oh, boy, did he. (laughs) Yep. That wasn't his fault, though. No. No, not at all. Um, But, you know, it was kind of interesting, you know, to hear Corey kind of talk about that, as well as even, you know, at the end, uh, talking a little bit about what we can expect maybe from this this new material and, you know, the stuff he's been writing, you know. Um, I didn't necessarily listen to the other show uh, that talked about it other than just the fact that, you know, I saw the headline. So um, I guess, you know, that's probably what a lot of people do when they see our headlines. They don't listen to the episodes. <laughs> they just maybe yep. read a headline and, and go from there. So uh, That's a lot quicker. Yeah, you know, it definitely is. Um, so maybe I'll do my due diligence and go back and actually listen to uh, what was said um all that aside though uh this is a lot of fun trivium is one of those bands though that it you forget how long they've been around but then you also forget that they're for as long as they've been around they're not like 40 year old dudes what i can't get past with trivium is how disgustingly good they are like there there's something that you know with with what i do listening to so many bands you you can tell which bands like practice and and which ones don't you know (laughs) Like, and, uh, and Trivium's just always been like, I don't know, man, like so musically just tight and on point, even, even when they went into like genre directions that I didn't like particularly love. Um, it seems like they always, I I don't know, man, there, there, there's a consistency to Trivium that I think a lot of bands lack. Well, I mean, as he kind of had said, there's... You know, he he kind of was making Corey was Corey was making the comment, you know, that sometimes he sees what bands will put out or the videos they put out or whatever, and there and he just kind of goes, "That that really you, you couldn't do any better." That's the one that that's what that you decided to go with that. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think that kind of speaks to the integrity the band has kind of always had with what they do and and being willing to grow. Um, you know, kind of another theme uh, the last few weeks on the on the show is you know kind of being able to look at yourself and and know that you are capable of better. And, and kind of demanding that of yourself time in and time out. Agreed. Uh, this episode runs kind of long, though, and the last couple episodes we've done have kind of been long in the tooth on uh, the intros. So without further ado, let's get into my conversation with Corey from Trivium, and we'll talk to you afterwards. <laughs> Have the 
pleasure of talking to Corey from Trivium, whose latest album, What the Dead Men Say, is out now via Roadrunner Records. Uh, first of all, congrats on this new record. Uh, as of when we're recording this, we're only four days since it has been released, and the response seems to be overwhelmingly positive. How does it feel to finally get this album out in, in this crazy world we're in right now? Uh, it's been great. You know, we've been excited about the release of the record for a while since we you know, finished it like late last year. Uh, so we've been sitting on it and, uh, you know, we kind of go the route of, uh, keeping everything quiet until the right time. So we've been sitting on the record for a while when people had no idea we were making a record or were expecting a record to come out anytime soon. So, uh, we're really excited to, uh, you know, get everyone pumped up and, uh, release the music. You know, we've been excited about the material that we came up with last year, you know, and we've been, you know, we're working on it. We're like, I think people are going to really be stoked on it. And, uh, and it's just been the, you know, response has been, been amazing. Fans have been really stoked. And obviously like with everything going on, you know, it's like people really craving content and stuff to entertain themselves. So, you know, we were really happy that, uh, you know, we could get the record out. Um, so people, you know, at least for, you know, for how long the record is, or if they listen to it multiple times, you know, kind of, you know, give them some kind of a uh, entertainment and escape um, for a little bit of the day and, and have something to enjoy and uh, have fun with. So uh see people have been really, you know, really stoked and really into the record. And, uh, you know, we're really happy that, uh, you know, we're able to get it out to people. I didn't necessarily know how I wanted to approach this topic. Um, and then yesterday and kind of looking up some other interviews uh, that you guys have done to just not really necessarily hit on the same things. Uh, saw that basically some news had been made that Matt was talking about the, I don't want to say the struggle, but basically just the fact that you guys decided to put this out where a lot of bands are, are pushing to have their record not come out during the middle of this, this COVID-19, uh, pandemic right now. Uh, we've seen some bands put out their, choose to put out their record and seeing, you know, basically the sales are obviously not what they thought they were going to be. But this actually kind of raises a more interesting question to me to, that I wanted to pose to you. And, and I don't know how much has gone into this uh, for you guys as far as more of the business side of things. But, you know, there's a lot made about album first week sales, about how it determines what your touring is going to look like, where you're going to land on festivals and so forth. And, you know, it kind of made me wonder, do you think that's going to be as prevalent of a thing, given the fact that there's no touring? Do you think that the lack of maybe first week sales it's not going to be as important as it usually has been deemed to be and that maybe we're going to see a shift away from that, that, uh, kind of philosophy. Um, I think, I think everyone in the, you know, in the, in the industry of, you know, whatever, like, you know, music or movies, you know, everyone's always like, Oh yeah, it was number one first week or opening weekend or record did well the first week, but it's like, everyone can see like, you know, what's happening with, you know, this situation going on that it's like, nothing's going to be what it's supposed to be. You know, it's like, you know, we, you know, a lot of fans have been talking about, you know, it's like, they're think this is like our, you know, best record or whatever, you know, it's like, they've been hyping it up and people have been really stoked on it and stuff. And it's just like, yeah, it's like, you can put the best record out ever at this time. And it probably is not going to sell or do the numbers that it would have done in the normal times just because, you know, there's so many people out of work, um, places are closed so it's like harder to even get get you know items like like a cd or a vinyl right now so it's like it is what it is and it's like i think you know our our kind of mindset was like it's not the time to worry about record sales because it's like people are just starved for content and and the fact that like we already put out a couple songs and got people really excited and like like we started putting out like the singles and the videos like before before everything kind of like really hit the, you know, the shitter where everything started closing and people were, you know, had to stay home. So like once that started happening, it kind of made people even more, you know, looking forward to the release day. And I could just see that like, you know, if like we started giving everyone all these like singles and stuff and they were like all stuck at home and like, like, man, I'm really, <clears throat> really looking forward to being able to listen to this record. And then like, you know, two weeks or three weeks away from the release, we were like, yeah, we're going to delay it for two months. And then it, it just, you know, disappoint a lot of people that were looking forward to, you know, having, having that record to, to entertain them and, and have fun with it. So we're like, yeah, it's like, you know, we have the record ready. Everything was at, you know, luckily we had everything printed and everything was at the, the warehouse 
ready to ship to people that pre-ordered it. So there wasn't any issue with being able to like manufacture the record. So we had everything ready to go. So we're like, let's just fucking do it. And then it's like, if, you know, people aren't able to you know, buy the CD because, you know, the chain store or whatever in their country, <clears throat> everything's closed. You know, they can always just buy it later. It's not going anywhere. So it's like, you know, <clears throat> eventually, you know, people stores will open back up. People will be able to buy it. And luckily like in our current day, you know, there's, there's all the streaming services and iTunes and there's other ways to get the record. So we weren't worried about people being able to hear it and be able to listen and listen to and enjoy it. It's like maybe the physical sales, cause you know, hard rock and metal still the majority of your sales are like the CDs and vinyls and stuff. And, <clears throat> and I was even looking on the charts last night, <clears throat> seeing like all the, you know, the rap and pop stuff, like, and it shows like how much of the actual record sales are made up of the streaming equivalent or the physical product. And some of those records were selling like 50, 60,000 units a week and like 400 copies of it was an actual CD. So it's like, there's a lot of, a lot of ways to make up for like lack of physical product. And luckily our fans have been so good about, you know, pre-ordering like our, our bundles and, and like wanting like the special items and everything like that. So um, we knew our fans would, would support the record, you know, cause you know, try to put out like the highest quality, you know, stuff that makes it worth buying you know, right away. So, uh, I think, I think things would be good. And then, you know, I think the, you know, the fact that the records out there, you know, the, the streams and the music, you know, the, the music videos and stuff on YouTube, like it's, it's definitely with people not having much to do, it's definitely getting a lot of, uh, eyes and ears on the material. So we're not worried about people knowing about it and hearing it. You know, it's just you know, maybe people have some issues with being able to like, you know, get their hands on a physical copy of it absolutely i think it was just more thinking about how antiquated some of the music industry side of things is like you know do you will a band get penalized for deciding to do what they feel is best for them and for their fan base and putting out something now when the touring kind of ramps back up or you know will they kind of realize like I guess that's not really that important of a fucking number to, to base anything off of. But, you know, kind of even thinking about that is just the fact that you even have to have that conversation now as far as, yo, we did the work, we got everything done, everything's good to go, like, let's just put it out. Like, the fact that there even is conversations now between bands and, and labels and management and so forth about what's quote-unquote best uh, moving forward in all of this. I, I just think that's kind of an interesting thought uh, since it's so... It's not happened before, not not to this extent for these reasons. Yeah, I think on the touring side of things, it's it's you know for a band like us, you know, I don't think it's really like the actual the CD sales because that those they they kind of always been a little bit separated because it's like usually when you're doing a tour or a festival and you know you're billing or or where you are on the on the show, it's usually going off of what your previous ticket sales are for your touring. So right. it's like. Um, we've done tours where, you know, we've sold more CDs than the band headlining because they have better, they had better, you know, history of, of ticket sales because they've been around longer. So, um, it's, it's a, it's a different animal, but, uh, you know, it's like the issue now is just like, you know, bands aren't able to tour and you know, that's, that's just kind of, you know, I think by the time we get back to being able to tour, like if, you know, it goes back to the way it was like before it all happened and people aren't worried about going to a concert and stuff. I think, I think we're, we're pretty confident that where we left off with the last record and then how people are responding to this record. I think, you know, it's like when, you know, we go on a tour, I think, you know, there's going to be plenty of, plenty of people who are going to be excited to, you know, to come out. But, uh, you know, it's just the, uh, everything going on right now, it's, it's kind of like, you know, the whole touring industry is just, you know, totally screwed and uh, don't know when anything's going to be, you know, starting back up or being able to do it. So um, it's definitely, uh, you know, we've talked about it as a group of just like, you know, by the time, you know, everything clears and we come out the other end of, of everything, like how many, you know, how many artists and bands are going to be just like broken up or disbanded because they just couldn't, you know, survive not being able to tour for so long because there's a lot of bands where the touring income with merch and, and, and show pay and stuff like that is like a big portion of their income. And, you know, 
that's why there's, you know, a lot of bands tour as much as they do nowadays is because, you know, the touring makes up for so much that they don't make on the, the streaming music side of things. So, um, just like, you know, you take that out of the equation, like how many of these, you know, smaller upcoming bands are going to be able to kind of weather the storm, which is, um, kind of like, you know, as you kind of mentioned before, it's just like a, a totally, you know, unprecedented time of no one's had to go through anything to this extent that, you know, you don't know what the, the kind of outcome is going to be with, uh, you know, with the music and touring side of things. Cause, um, you know, we might not even like, you know, our record just came out and it's like, we don't even know if like, are we going to even be able to tour to support the record, you know, in the next year. So it's, it's a pretty wild time and you don't really kind of know what's going to happen or when it's anything's going to happen. So it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. I guess my last question on that, given Matt's prolific, uh, online presence, basically through his YouTube channel and Twitch and all that kind of stuff, has there been talks uh, of maybe doing like one of these Fortnite concerts or something that you've seen, you know, bands like, uh, I know Travis Scott just did one of the more recent ones that went pretty big, but you know, I know Korn did one uh, in something and I know like they're doing a lot of these kind of online quote unquote festivals and such. Is that something that you guys have looked into at all to kind of help promote this record? Uh, we were actually, before any of this shit happened, we were actually, since we weren't, the record, you know, just came out and we weren't actually going to start touring till, end of June on that Megadeth Lamb of God tour. So we were actually right. like kind of like the first time that we really like put out a record and didn't really have any immediate touring, like right around the record. So we were already planning on doing some kind of online stuff for like the uh, record release, like doing a, like a concert, you know, e either playing the whole record or playing, you know, songs from the record or just playing like a concert and also doing like a, like kind of like a Q and a, like, more interactive than just like a straight up concert. Um, so we had all these plans of like doing some cool stuff to like performance wise to, to interact with the, the fan base and uh, promote the record. But half the band, like we, we don't all live in the same area. So like once everything went down, you know, like Alex is out in like the, the Bay area and then Paulo's up in Chicago. So it's like, you know, we were just like, well, it's like, we don't want to like, you know, put anyone at risk for, you know, for trying to fly or, you know, any of that stuff. So, um, we had to kind of like alter our plans. We're still planning on, you know, doing something when, you know, it's a little bit safer and, and easier to, uh, to travel. Um, hopefully sometime this summer, um, the other guys will be able to get down here and then, uh, we're going to do some, some stuff with the, on Twitch, you know, do some like, you know, setting up this whole, uh, setup in our rehearsal spot and doing some like live concerts and doing some fun stuff, like, you know, playing, playing songs you wouldn't normally hear us play live on tour pl playing some of like the kind of like more obscure trivium stuff and b-sides and maybe even just covers that you know we've never played before you know just to kind of do something that entertain the fans and give them something different um so right now it's like uh since we couldn't do our you know live performance kind of thing for the record we've been doing a bunch of other you know we changed our plans and um been doing what we can you know we're doing some like online like video conferencing stuff like streaming where you know we just did one yesterday where we did like a virtual in-store where um we did like a video chat with the whole band um signing the pre-orders of the record for fans and then you know they could ask us questions and we just were shooting the shit while we signed records um and then we did another one with a full sale um talking about making the record at the the, the full sale university and then uh we got another interactive chat on um, Thursday with uh, Josh Wilbur who produced and mixed our record. We're going to kind of dive into uh, the whole making of the record and just uh, also people that are interested in like the more technical recording side of things can, you know, throw questions at Josh about, you know, approaching making music and recording music and the whole uh, process of how we made the record. So um, kind of, you know, trying to do what we can, you know, over the internet with the, uh, kind of the full band interaction with fans. So uh, people seem to have been enjoying it, been getting a pretty good, uh, you know, viewership of people, you know, logging into the, to the live streams and stuff. So, uh, you know, at least we're, you know, whatever we can do to be, you know, as engaging and kind of entertaining as we possibly can with, uh, with our means to, you know, what we have at our disposal to, uh, 
to do it. <laughs> you know, something that's been really interesting in listening to this record and kind of seeing all that has kind of gone into it from the videos that have been released, some of the stuff Matt has, you know, talked about on the his Twitch stream, and just kind of some of the other press all of you have done, you know, is how kind of the attention to detail that you all collectively pay to not only the music, not only the lyrics, everything that goes into your band, but just everything. And I was trying to figure out by kind of going back and listening to, you know, previous interviews, going back, listening to the other records and such. I was trying to figure out when did that switch kind of get turned where you guys all started to kind of take on all these different facets of the band that you took and were presenting in the music alone. When did that kind of start happening, do you think? Like, is there a, a, a pinpoint or a conversation maybe between all of you where you're like, okay, so like the band and the music's doing great, but we really need to like focus that same energy into all these other things and make sure that we're putting out the best representation of our band, our brand as possible. Um, I think the first thing that comes to mind is probably like maybe uh, in waves, I think. Okay. Was, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think we just kind of like got more on the, like just kind of like, figured out that like you know we just we had you know you, you, you have to hire you know we hire people to do certain things that we can't like the music videos or artwork for the records and stuff and you hire someone to do a job and you know you can either go the route of just letting that person just do whatever they 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 want to do or what they think of to do or you can creatively you know get you know put your feet in the water. You kind of like, all right, well, it's like, you're the one who's going to like actually make it, but like, I'm going to give you content or direct you in a way to what I'm thinking the vision should be. So, you know, we definitely hired people we trusted and were had faith in that they could deliver, you know, the right art direction. And some people, you know, we'll just like, Hey, listen to the music and what, what's the, what does the music inspire you visually? And then they give us, you know, their idea. And then we kind of like, if we were into the idea, we just uh, kind of refine it with the person to make it something that we feel strongly about. And, uh, you know, we, we always feel that, you know, when you're in a band, it's like, you know, music's important. The lyrics are important. The songs are important, but there's so much more to the, you know, to the, to the package it's like you want the visuals to stimulate people and the visual the the music to stimulate people because it's like when people look at the album cover or see a music video it's like the visual the visual impacts you know it, it strikes an emotion with the music it's like a very powerful thing same thing with like a scene from a movie and then there's like some really dramatic music and intense music with it to, that makes the emotion of the of what you're watching even more powerful. So um, we just really wanted to make sure that every, every aspect of our bands with this, you know, writing the songs and also like what goes into the, the visuals, the creatives, even like the, the clothes we wear and, you know, the press photos. It's like, we want to make sure that every, everything that has to do with us, like we have control or have some input in because, it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, you get to let like the record label control a bunch of stuff. But it's like, at the end of the day, it's like that person at the record label is not the one who's going to be criticized or, you know, for it. It's like, it's like, you're, you're the face, you're the face of the franchise. So it's like, you're the one that's going to get the heat if something doesn't go right or it looks weird or people don't like. So it's like, it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to be like a puppet dancing up on stage, you know, for, something i'm not like 100 percent behind so we're very hands-on and luckily you know we have an awesome record label that you know after all these years you know like they know that we're dead serious on you know everything about what we do so we you know they let us just kind of have free reign we just make everything and do everything the way we want and then they support us and and put it out so um we're very fortunate that uh we don't have any creative restraints with uh you know, just having the, the free reign to, to do what uh, we feel is best for our band. So, uh, you know, I think it's very important. We definitely, it definitely motivates us even more. And we see a lot of bands that just kind of seem to phone in the, the visuals or artwork of records. And it's just like, man, it's like, that's the best you could think of. Or like, you know, you just accepted <laughs> like that. It's like, 
I've seen bands like like here's the album cover and it's just like really like it's like that's the best you could you could come up with or like or it's just like you just kind of like just agreed to like just a very you know un exciting or just like something very basic or generic looking kind of stuff so it's like you know we feel that you know we want to be the the ones that like see like people can pick up on that like they really put time and effort into wanting to make really cool content for for our fans so uh and then obviously uh you know matt's wife is a uh in the she's a graphic designer and stuff like that so she handles like a lot of all the art that you know kind of is uh connected to the band with uh you know the album stuff and the layouts finding artists for merchandise and uh, music videos and stuff so luckily we were uh fortunate that we have a, an in-house like art director so it's, it kind of makes it a little bit easier on uh kind of like the research and development of uh ideas yeah it, it was kind of weird and looking at your album title or not your album title your album cover i was just kept thinking about how striking it looked like just visually whether i knew it was you whether it could have been a hip-hop artist could have been whatever even for a movie I would have probably at least picked it up and looked at it in more of a tactile experience because it just visually looks very interesting with the colors and the the concept of it and so forth. And, you know, then you're kind of looking at it, you know, what the dead men say, like, how does that apply? You know, it just it's like I said, it doesn't seem like you are one, especially over the last handful of records that your band is just resting on. Yeah, it's good enough. It just seems like there's so much attention to the most minute details that I think that's kind of what has allowed you to have a higher level of quality control on everything. And it just, I don't know, just kind of something I would been thinking about the last couple of days and leading up to this. Yeah, we, uh, you know, it's kind of, we kind of like last couple records, we kind of, we kind of end up stumbling on to like, like in a natural process, just kind of stumble upon stuff that becomes very, I guess, iconic to the record because when we were, do- when we were doing this record, you know, we had the, you know, the album title and we were, we actually had a different artist working on a, a totally different cover concept. And we, we, we ended up kind of redirecting that concept into some, uh, some alternate artwork for like merchandise and stuff like that. But we had like this other cover in the works. And then the, uh, the place where we recorded the album at full sail university here in Orlando, we uh, hired their, art director who like teaches like the photography and and stuff like that over there to do our, uh, our like promo shots for like that, like the CD booklet, like all the shots of the band and everything. And he had all these really cool kind of, uh, photo concepts with the band and the, the shots for the, for promo. Um, and then he just started shooting like props and other things like within kind of like just extra art pieces for us to have at our disposal for whatever we needed to uh, promote or, or do art for websites and stuff like that. And he started shooting these photos of uh, these like kind of decayed flowers. And cause like the whole, what the dead men say, he was kind of like the concept, like he had for some of the photos was like these decayed flowers, kind of like what you'd see on uh, like left on a gravestone. Like just like people that leave flowers and eventually they decay and, you know, kind of wither away. So we had all these like kind of old props and stuff and some flowers for like the kind of motif of uh, kind of like the, the vibe of the record. And he started taking these photos of these like decayed, you know, dying, you know, flowers and stuff. And we were just like, wow, it's very kind of artsy, very, you know, simple, but like meaningful kind of description or like visual description of like kind of like the the record and we kind of just changed like the whole art direction once we saw these photos and and it was it was really cool because like the uh kind of like it looks like because like what the dead men say is kind of like this thing where it's like you don't know are you like what state are you the kind of in between state is like are you alive are you dead you're kind of like in between kind of feeling and like the art you know with the the the, the smoky um like flower it's like is it catching on fire or is it going out like it's kind of like that same kind of in between thing very kind of you know um metaphor i guess like you know you don't know it's kind of like the visual representation of like kind of like the the, the title um so it was, it, was re- it was really cool once we saw it we kind of just knew like this kind of like a lot of stuff is 
we work through ideas and then it's kind of like everyone just kind of has like this moment where we're like, like it just hits you where you're like, Oh, that's, that's where we need to go. That's, that's what we've been looking for. And, uh, it, it just kind of, uh, you know, we're just kind of always looking for what, what the record needs. And we don't just kind of, you know, just settle for just, okay. It's like, we want everyone to be super stoked and excited about everything we're doing. So we, work on stuff for, you know, long time. You know, there's like a lot of things that are like in the works for, for months. Like when we're working on the record, like we might have a working title or what we're going to call the record. And then at the last minute, we're like, now that doesn't fit the record. We need to go something else. And then something else just kind of like presents itself as the way to go. And, you know, once we, we don't, we just kind of like work through the process until, we have that gut feeling of this is, this is what's what, what it needs. So it's, uh, we're lucky that, uh, everyone's very, uh, um, you know, we, we, we dig our, uh, we put our line in the sand, you know, like with, if we're feel strongly about an idea or, um, just anything with our band, you know, if someone tries to challenge us on something that we feel very a hundred percent on that, you know, we, uh, we dig in and, we don't uh, alter our our plans, so it's a it's a very a group group process, which is a uh, which is really cool. So um, I had mentioned uh, before we started this officially that I had been texting with uh, Jordan Whalen of now Kill the Lights, uh, formerly still currently I guess of still remains, and you know we were kind of just texting about uh, the Road Rage tour you guys did a while ago, many 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 years ago, and just kind of this this era of you guys you know coming out of no seemingly nowhere uh, and taking the the metal storm metal world by storm. And, you know, something we were kind of talking about and something I've kind of talked about a bit on this podcast is, you know, just at how young, you know, some of these bands and artists are when they get signed and then, you know, going out into the world and doing this thing that they did as a hobby and for the love of the music and the craft, which now becomes kind of, I don't want to say tainted per se, but becomes a product and a commodity that a label invests in and expects a return of investment on and so on and so forth. And just kind of the unnatural circumstances that surround young people when they themselves aren't fully developed or realized as to who they're going to be and what they want out of life at that point in time. And kind of thinking about that time and talking about it with Jordan and and in the context of Trivium as a whole, you know, there was a lot of, there's a lot of weird uh, expectations, I feel like, that were placed on you guys and speaking to how young you were and how you were going to save metal and the second coming of this band or this band or this band. And I feel like once that kind of went away, you guys were able to really come into your own and be the band I think that you were always meant to be and a shining example of why you've lasted so long because I think people stop comparing you to other things and compare you only to you. And I kind of wondered, what was that process like to go through? Um, if you can kind of speak to that in any way, shape, or form. Um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, obviously, like, when we were... I guess when I first joined the band, you know, we, you know, I joined right before, you know, we started writing songs for Ascendancy or what became Ascendancy and also like, you know, the songs that ended up getting us, you know, the demo that got assigned to Roadrunner, you know, we were just kind of, you know, it was just like that time where we just were like, Hey, it's just like, we have nothing else to do. Let's just go to our, let's go jam. And you know, every day after Matt, you know, he was still in high school, you know, and I just like, you know, was in, you know, at full sale going to college and it would just be like, Hey, when Matt got out of school, we just, you know, went and jammed and played music and wrote songs. And, you know, we wrote all the stuff for ascendancy, just kind of like just having fun in, in a hot as fuck warehouse. And, uh, yeah, it just kind of connected with people. And it's like, obviously it's like, we were just like stoked, you know, to be, able to be signed to like a a label like roadrunner and uh, make a record and go out on tour. And, you know, the first kind of bunch of touring we did was either before ascendancy or right after it came out. And it was like, you know, we'd play and it'd be like, he'd be like, Oh, cool. We got a response. But it was like, we still like go out in the crowd and hang out after your set and just kind of like shoot the shit. And, uh, and then it wasn't until uh, the first time we came over, on uh, the Road Rage European tour, when we played in the UK, when things were like, oh shit, this is like, 
a thing, you know, because we had been, it was just so, so casual. Like we were just stoked, you know, like going out on tour and, you know, in the States playing shows and it was very, you know, no one really like bothered you or came up to you or recognized you. So it was very, just kind of like, you know, just casual kind of like just having fun touring. And then we got over to the UK and like the first show we played, like, you know, we got off the bus and there was just like a swarm of just all these people coming up, like wanting us to sign the record and take pictures. And it was like the first time like, it was like, Oh shit, fans. Like we have these, you know, it's like, <laughs> it was like, it was just like a totally different like experience. Like it was just like a whole nother level that was just like, Oh shit. Like, so this is what it, you know, it's like for, you know, band people that, you know, it's like people recognize us, like just out on the street and just like coming up to us and just, it was just like, it's kind of like, just like, Oh, like a shocker. Um, and then it was just crazy because then everything after that, like we played the download festival and things went nuts. And we were like, uh, especially in the UK is where everything was kind of like the, the learning moment because it got so big over there at that time. You know, uh, we're like on every magazine cover played on the BBC radio. Um, you know, the record went gold and it was just like fucking nuts. And I think it was just like all the media attention and just all that stuff was just like at such a young age. It was just like, you, you, you definitely, uh, when your first experience of, of stuff like that, especially when you're like at that kind of like late teens, almost 20, 21 ish, you know, like you're still kind of, kind of figuring things out of like who you are as a person, what you want to do. And, uh, especially, uh, you know, getting, uh, blasted or or you know people talking about you in magazines and newspapers and stuff like you can definitely kind of i think at that time like you know i know matt's definitely talked about how it like definitely you know personal stuff that was like kind of like publicly you know said or or whatever commented on in 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 public definitely had an effect on kind of uh where we went after ascendancy with the crusade doing something totally different it was kind of like a reaction to like just like a lot of stuff that was going on at the time and then eventually you know we just kind of uh i guess got used to got used to the you know how everything was and it's always going to be a certain way with just like how you handle media and stuff and it's like you know a lot of us are pretty chill and laid back and you know have a fairly you know we're not like super sensitive thin-skinned people so uh you know especially now with the internet being more prominent than it was back then there's uh all the social media where people can just kind of tee off on if you if you do something like i think it's another motivation to like want to put a lot of you know i think it should be something that puts a lot of motivation in bands not to phone in or half-ass their music is because if you do it's like you're gonna get <laughs> everyone commenting on you know comparing your music to your previous work and and whatever so it's like everyone's got a voice now to, to, you know, put it out there. So, um, I think our upbringing and, and kind of learning all this stuff at an early age back then, you know, it's like, now it's like we're seasoned veterans where it's like, someone could just flat out be like, yo, I think your new record sucks. And it's just like, all right, whatever. You know, it's like not a, doesn't, doesn't affect my, you know, my emotions, you know, because it's like, I know a lot of people, you know, love the records and, uh, and no matter what it is, you know, music, movies, or TV shows, anything that goes online, it's like there's always, you're never going to get 100% of the people to all back something. It's like there's always going to be someone that's going to find disappointment in, in something. So um, it's just like we always just kind of always focus on the positive, always focus on the people that are loving it. And, you know, if someone doesn't like it, it's like, hey, there's stuff I don't like either. So it's like I'm not, you know, too worried about, you know, that 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 thing so uh yeah it's just like you know growing up in the public eye is definitely you know luckily we're not like some young movie star or something like that it has like paparazzi after us so it's a little, little bit easier in the metal world but uh um, definitely still even in the metal world it, it you know definitely was you know it definitely was something going on that uh that definitely can uh could you know in a, in a different circumstance or different people, you know, it definitely what we went through could have, could have went the other direction. You know, it's like, you know, luckily we're all, we're raised good and 
you know, had good head on our shoulders that we were able to take it all in and learn from it and grow from it and, uh, become the, the band we are now. So it's, it's definitely, uh, you know, not too many, uh, metal bands, I guess, get signed and thrown out there when you're getting kicked out of the club after you play. Cause you're not old enough to be in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's been interesting, you know, and talking to some of these people, you know, and a lot of the, you know, being in my mid 30s myself, uh, you know, just thinking back to that time frame where you're seeing bands, you know, I'm thinking like the guys in like in Yellow Card or Finch or, you know, like you guys in the metal world, even the Still Remains guys, you know, like everyone was just so young. And to think about that time frame of my life and then also having to think about the pressures of, you know, being in a business that's very unforgiving, uh, especially, you know, the image of things, you know, having to do promo photos and such and people commenting, you know, like you made the comment, like, you know, it's not the other people who have to wear those clothes or have those photos taken and be like, oh, you know, I'm going to get slagged off later on because of how stupid I look in this thing. But, you know, because you think it looks cool, uh, you know, I am the one who has to deal with the the repercussions, basically, of, of that choice. And just kind of thinking about that as a whole and, and the fact that you guys were kind of in the beginning of the, the Internet as far as being a band that just was seemingly talked about so much you know in the overseas press and the states press and so on and so forth and how you were touted as kind of just being these metal saviors at such a young age that it's like fuck man i couldn't imagine having that much pressure heaped on me you know right out the gate basically yeah well we we have those moments of uh you know photos popping up of you know our early you know first couple promo photos with roadrunner back in the day and they had someone dress us and we look fucking stupid and uh <laughs> and they're 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 out there forever and we're just like yep yeah, yep yeah, i remember that was a if i could go back i would definitely not wear that shirt ever again or never once would i have worn that um and then we've had also music videos where luckily we made them based off of uh someone else's i guess concept and they came out fucking awful so uh they never never released it so we kind of dodged a couple or some some bullets from uh being embarrassing footnotes on our career but uh you know we you know those are definitely learning moments and uh you know it's like, i think it's like when you're when you start off and you're young like we were you definitely you know put a lot of i guess faith and trust in more experienced people that have been there especially record label people you kind of figure they they have the experience and knowledge of how everything works that uh, they'll steer you in the right direction. And uh, luckily the, a lot of people at our record label are very, uh, very good at that. And also our manager has been with us since the beginning is, you know, definitely knows when to, uh, you know, call out some bullshit or uh, know when something feels good or um, doesn't, you know, doesn't seem like it's going to be a good idea. So luckily we have a, a good, good team on our side that has uh, kept us, uh, I guess, away from embarrassing moments. And, uh, and then we're also, I think now over time, we've just kind of learned of what, uh, you know, we just know what, you know, kind of feels, or we know what's comfortable to us. And, you know, if something, you know, got gut feeling something just like, I don't know if this is going to be a good idea. You know, it's kind of like, all right, well, if someone's got that, that feeling already, then it's, it's probably, <laughs> not gonna not gonna happen but uh yes you know learning experience kind of learning your trade and all the kind of ins and outs of uh business and you know you know you're you're in a band um that you know entertainment stuff but also like people realize it's it's a music business for a reason there's a lot of stuff outside of just writing and playing music um that goes into you know putting out a record or being in a band and stuff it's you know the business. So it's like, you know, Trivium's like, you know, we we're owners of an LL, you know, LLC. So it's like, you know, there's a lot of other things that you, uh, you learn along the way that goes into operating a, you know, a full-time, you know, band and stuff. So, uh, it's definitely crazy, but, uh, it's, it's definitely a fun job. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I don't really have anything else for you. Um, I think all of that actually is a good wrapping point for just kind of, you know, this record, I think, you know, this new record is a great encapsulation of everything everyone loves about Trivium, but progressing it to the next level and making it go forward. And 
I know I'm really, I mean, I know it's too early to even start talking about the next record, but I mean, sometimes when you hear something and you're just really surprised that you're able to top the last thing, which was really good, you just kind of go, well, fuck, where do you go from now? I'm interested to see where the new shit goes, because something I'm always a fan of talking about is the sprinkles. Like, there's always kind of a bread trail of where a band might start going, and there's little pieces of it, but then they explore it more on the next record, and there's definitely stuff on this record that I think... I've heard, and it, there's kind of been sprinklings up throughout the last couple of records, especially in working with Josh, that kind of has me going like, okay, I'm assuming you're probably going to go back to Josh. It seems like that's kind of the the de facto guy that pulls out the best in, in you and just about everyone else he works with. I'm interested to see maybe this this trilogy of you and Josh working together, what that's going to sound like next and where you're going to push your sound on this next record already. And it's not to say that this record isn't good. I'm just excited because of how good this one is of where you're going to go and where you're going to take us on the next journey. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, uh, I think it, uh, it's been working out like obviously like having Alex join us on the last record has definitely, you know, helped make everything kind of come together. Just having that, that guy behind the kit that basically, takes away any kind of limitations that you could do songwriting wise. So that's definitely opened up the three of us writing wise is because we know there's nothing we have to hold back on or be like, well, this is a really cool part or song, but I know it's just not going to, it's not going to work with, you know, how, how everything is currently. So, you know, after we started playing with Alex on, you know, writing the last record, it was like, Oh shit, we can, we can do all sorts of crazy shit. So that's where like, thrown into the fire and beyond oblivion when I started writing those was like reaction to the first writing session because it was like, Oh, we can, Alex can play all this, you know, fast, crazy stuff. So it was like, I don't have to fucking, you know, hold back on song ideas, you know, something being a little too over, over the top. Um, so going into this record and, you know, we've had did a previous record and toured on it and stuff. It just made the whole process even more streamlined and faster and also, you know, knowing Josh and working with him and him being his personality was so fit so well with the the four of us that this made the whole you know working experience so smooth and easy that uh you know we're able to just kind of work the way we want to work at such a efficient pace that it, it just kind of helps make the music even better. And uh you know obviously with uh with the old coronavirus stuff going on and not knowing when we're going to tour and stuff, you know, we've already started writing songs and ideas for uh, moving forward for whatever, you know, whenever we uh, start doing new music again. But, you know, we had a lot of stuff written um, that we never got to on, on this record that we have a bunch of songs and stuff in demo form. Um, that are really cool, a lot of really cool stuff. So it's, it's, I think we definitely, uh, you know, and even the stuff we've been writing now, um, I've written a couple of songs just kind of like, since I'm home, not doing anything, you know, I've just been kind of noodling around writing some ideas and stuff. And I, I sent them to the guys and, you know, it's it definitely, if, if anything moving forward, it's like, uh, you know, Matt, Matt listened to a couple, couple of things that I, that I sent them and he was just like, what's gotten into you with all this angry music. So, uh, it's definitely coming out. <laughs> it's definitely, uh, coming out really, uh, really dark and intense. And, uh, you know, I think that's, you know, it's kind of a, I guess a reflection of, uh, I guess the times or whatever, but usually it's like, you know, everything's been going really well. And, you know, we always say that we usually write the most angry, pissed off music when we're, we're in good moods. So and everyone's, uh, you know, good spirits and uh you know good health and everything like that so we're just kind of write music and uh just kind of staying you know kind of trying to do what we can to uh i guess entertain ourselves since uh you know we can't tour or anything like that right now so uh you know it's like might as well get uh you know people are really excited about the record as, as you were saying that you're wanting to hear hear more but uh you know, definitely uh, won't have to wait three years between records next time. So we're definitely uh, have in our mind that we want to follow up this record a lot quicker than we did the previous one. So we're kind of already excited about getting working on new ideas and kind of seeing where they take us. Because uh, once we start writing it, it kind of naturally just kind of progresses in a certain 
certain fashion without having to force anything. So a lot of this, even the songs, you know, you know, written like, uh, I think like all my, my new stuff that I've written is like before this record even came out and it's like a totally different kind of animal than, than what's on this record. So I think it's just kind of a natural thing for us as a band or just being creative. It's like, once you kind of already do something, you just kind of, without even thinking about it or just kind of like, kind of take it in a different direction. So it kind of excites you that, uh, you're kind of, uh, onto a, a new, uh, new territory instead of just kind of like writing the same type of sound that you already just did a couple months ago. It's like, you're kind of like finding like, well, right. I like heavy, you know, heavy metal music, but it's like, what can I do a little differently? That'll make this song not sound like, you know, something I, I wrote six months ago or something. So uh, I think it just naturally kind of, uh, is part of our, our band is we just kind of move on to the next thing or find like the next little thing that kind of makes the next batch of songs kind of unique on its own. So people will definitely, uh, I think we'll, it'll definitely won't, you know, we're not going to go in a different style. Of, yeah. Yeah. It was bad. I guess that was a unfortunate time for the, the phone to drop out when it was like the wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I guess we'll just, uh, I don't know exactly where you left off uh, for you. Um, you were just basically saying it won't take so long to get out something new and, and all that. Uh, uh, I think I was just kind of wrapping up with uh, just speaking of like moving to the, you know, what we might expect from the, uh, the follow up to this one is, uh, you know, we just naturally, uh, once we do do a record, kind of like when we start writing again, um, it just kind of there's always something that kind of takes, takes you in a direction that, uh, kind of separates itself from, uh, the previous record. So, uh, um, once we get diving into the material and ideas for, uh, for follow up, I'm sure there'll be some kind of direction or some kind of theme or something that, uh, kind of makes the, the thing that becomes what makes that record different from the previous one. So it usually just kind of naturally happens like songwriting wise with, uh, write a bunch of songs, do the record. And then once you start writing songs, like they kind of kind of go in a slightly different direction that kind of makes it doesn't, you know, kind of separates itself from what you had previously been working on. So um, I think it's just kind of like been a natural thing that just kind of happens with our band and our, our kind of dynamic of how we write that uh, we'll, we'll have, you know, a new record sooner than, than later um, than three years um, that, uh, I'm sure we'll have some exciting stuff that um, you, di you didn't get on this record. So it's always, uh, I think, something that fans have always said that, you know, when Turbine puts out a record, there's always, like, some surprises, and you don't know exactly what you're going to get every time. So it makes, a, uh, makes the release of the record exciting because you're always kind of waiting to hear what, uh, what kind of new uh, tricks we have on our sleeves um, for any particular record. So uh, um, I know now that we can't, can't tour we don't know when we're going to be able to tour it's like kind of i've just been kind of thinking more and more about uh kind of like focusing time and energy on uh writing new material because that's kind of like the only thing i guess band wise we're really capable of doing right now is uh working on just new music for you know a rainy day or whenever we can uh move on to the next thing so it's uh definitely uh, something that has helped uh, fill up some uh, dead time around the house. <laughs> Absolutely. Where can everyone find you and the band online? Um, it's just like, you know, uh, we all have, uh, the band has all the social medias and so does all the members. So uh, there's trivia.org, uh, which is the website uh, where our, you know, merch store or anything, if you want to go buy some new merch or the record, new record vinyl and everything like that. It's probably, uh, if, if you have uh, like a lot of people, no access to go to a store that's open. Um, those are still, you know, our web store is shipping so you can get the physical product if you're, you're wanting that. And then uh, everyone's on all the social medias. If you want to follow anyone in particular or Trivium officials, the Twitter, Instagram, and then obviously just look up Trivium on whatever streaming service or YouTube, whatever you use for, for music we're at, we're all on, on those so uh and there's uh since the the record release there's lots of uh lots of stuff coming out on all the socials and stuff with uh content and, and stuff like that and, you know some 
behind the behind the the scenes stuff and also just interactive chats and stuff if anyone wants to kind of need something to do and engage with us talk about the new record learn some stuff about it you know there's lots of stuff we're doing on uh our socials and the internet to uh hopefully entertain and uh if you have any uh curiosities about the uh the new record and how it was made and everything like that will be uh at your at your disposal to ask questions so uh feel free to jump on there and have some fun with us absolutely well thank you Corey, for taking the time uh if you haven't checked out the new record go pick it up he gave you all the avenues to do such and uh fingers crossed uh the tour you guys are going to be on happens because it's a great pack it's a great package and uh i want to go see it so i know i want i want to be on it uh, <laughs> so it's uh it's it's the tour is definitely gonna happen and just you know who knows when uh all the regulations will you know make it safe to uh to do so but uh we'll be uh we're chomping at the bit to uh get out there and play these songs so uh hopefully we'll see uh see all the fans all over uh as soon as we possibly can. So that was my conversation with Corey. A nice long chat. Uh, you know something that we love over on this podcast, and, and really any podcast that I, I enjoy listening to? Someone who actually gives you well-informed, long-thought-out answers. Well, you don't like, yep, that's what we did. Yep, we have <laughs> been on the end of those on occasion. Yeah, those are always fun. Those are like the 15-minute interviews. Yeah. Yeah. No, we did. That was kind of the nice thing, too. Uh, Corey, as you heard right at the end, uh, Corey actually dropped the call and then called me back. Uh, so I wasn't, you know, that's kind of a fun thing, too. I don't know if a lot of people realize that, like, when a call, sometimes with this being over the internet or over, you know, Skype with a phone call or whatever, the thing that happens sometimes is, I won't hear someone. They'll keep talking. And if we don't get disconnected, there's a little bit of audio I won't hear. However, the weird thing is, is sometimes when that happens, uh, when going back to edit, all of the other person's audio will actually be there. Yeah. But I won't have heard it in real time. So, you know, in this situation, Corey's audio cut out. And I was like, so when I say, like, I don't know where you left off, it's not because I wasn't listening. It's because I don't know where he at least cut off or what he was saying because the last thing i heard was uh you know a certain part of it but he could have been talking for an extra 10 20 seconds uh yeah. as i've learned so uh always kind of interesting when that happens but uh you know it was really gracious of him to uh take so much time especially you know when i was like well I, you know start wrapping up i guess uh you know i have a couple more questions but and he was like oh i got time <laughs> Right. It's always the best thing to hear. I got time. We're good. <laughs> yeah, I, I always love that. I'm like, hey, how much time do you, Eric? You know, we won't try to take up too much of your evening. I think that's what I always say, and um, which I stole from you. And uh, they're always like, dude, I got, I got nothing going on. You're like, sweet. Well, let's get into it. Where were you born? Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's how you end up with weird questions like I did with uh, Dennis and Refuse. And I'm like, yeah, so what did you lose your virginity to, <laughs> music-wise? <laughs> right. <laughs> but as we kind of said in the intro, and as you just heard, uh, this interview ran a little bit long, so uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. If you would like to keep up with Trivium, you can find them on Facebook at Trivium, Instagram at Trivium Band, Twitter at Trivium Official, or just go to their website, Trivium.org. Uh, if you would like to keep up with Corey on the socials, Instagram and Twitter at Corey Trivium. Uh, again, their latest record, What the Dead Men Say, is out now. Go pick it up. It is a great record. Unfortunately, the tour they were going to do with Lamb of God and Megadeth is uh, postponed. And uh, hopefully we'll be rescheduled for some time in the new year. Um, but doesn't mean you can't support him in a multitude of other ways. Matt obviously is prolific on Twitch and is constantly doing some sort of a stream of some variety. Uh, and as you heard Corey say, there's a lot of plans to do a lot of different stuff since they weren't really planning on being on the road currently uh, for a little right. bit longer. So keep up with them. They they constantly are a band that figures out a way to to give their fans and interact with fans uh, in a multitude of ways. So uh, definitely worth the follow, however you want to follow them. And speaking of a good follow, Dan will tell you where he can be found on the internet. You can follow me all around the internet at on Twitter at Discuss Metal Dan. You can uh, send me an email at DiscussMetalDan at gmail.com. You can reach out to me on Facebook under Daniel Terry. And uh, you can find my other podcast, Discography Discussion and Discuss Metal at DiscussMetal.com. And if you would like to keep up with all things this podcast, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Pod. Head on over to our website, BruceSpeakPod.com. See a trend there. 
very easy to remember where we are. Uh, head on over to YouTube as well if that's where you like to listen to your media. We have some videos of some of the interviews we've done in the past. Uh, we, we're, it's where all of our Instagram lives are at. Uh, working on, as of when we're talking right now, of trying to get Phil from uh, All That Remains and Telly Smith of The Word Alive uh, on to do one pretty soon. That'd uh, be cool. So we'll, we're figuring that out. And uh, a lot of things up on over at the website, a lot of merch, our pins that are $10, all of our sponsors, which leads us to our sponsors themselves, rockability.com. Head on over there and get you some awesome swag. They have over 500,000 items. You never have to worry about the integrity of said products. They are officially licensed through the band, so not only are you supporting Rockabilia when you buy something, but you're also supporting the bands as well. Uh, some of the money goes back to them. And don't forget, you can use our code BREW15 to save 15% off your total order. Cannot be used in conjunction with the 10% off discount code you see pop up when you first go to the website. Again, that's BREW15 to get 15% off your total order. Thanks to Rockabilia.com again. Uh, OnPointPalmade.com. Keep your beard and hair looking on points. Uh, Salons are back open, so now you guys should have no excuse as to why your hair can't look good. Uh, Buy up some of their stuff. Use our code BSP15 and you will get 15% off your total purchase. And last but not least, is the bean bastard go to the beanbastard.com get you some delicious coffee i recommend the proton pack and the mom blend personally uh head on over there though follow them on facebook and instagram at the bean bastard and let them know that we are sending you and for the brutally speaking podcast i am john and i am dan we will talk to you all next time boom oh that fucking sucked oh that fucking sucked shao Khan, what'd you think that was pathetic yeah yeah coach what'd you think Okay. Okay. I mean, I knew it was going to fucking suck, but I think those guys were a little rude. Austin Powers? How about new? Okay. I thought we were going to get the Austin Powers vote. We did not. John, use that for your podcast. It fucking sucks. But uh, you knew what you were getting into. It's your own fault. Uh, It will result in less listens. You're going to see a... Decline in listeners if you start the show with that. You're going to see 30 seconds in, the number will plummet. And I will be there at the bottom of the plummet saying, I fucking told you, don't use this fucking riff. It sucks. But it's yours.